Hello, this is Stefan from Conductor, and welcome to this video to learn Kafka Connect. So when you do Apache Kafka applications, sometimes it feels like you're not the first one in the world to write the way to get data out of Twitter or to write data into PostgreSQL, Elasticsearch, MongoDB. And so you are going through the same process that someone else in the world will have gone through. And then additionally, any bugs you'll have, maybe someone will have fixed them already. So the idea is that we want to be able to reuse people's code and Kafka Connect is a framework for that. So we're going to build connector and publish them and we can reuse the connectors that other people have published. This really speeds up the way for you to get data in and out of Kafka. So if we look at Kafka Connect and then Kafka Streams, we have four common Kafka use cases. To take a source database into Kafka, we need to use the producer API. To take data from Kafka and put it back into Kafka, we need both to read the data, so consumer API, and then to write the data, so producer API. For doing Kafka into a sync, we need to use a consumer. And then if we also have an application, this is also a consumer. So the first use case is addressed by using Kafka Connect Source, which is a way for us to get data from external sources into Kafka. Kafka Streams is going to address the second use case with a much nicer API than using uh, consumers and producers. And Kafka Connect Sync is going to give us a way to get data from Kafka and insert it into common places. So the idea is that out of this, we're going to simplify and improve getting data in and out of Kafka. And Kafka Streams, very soon you'll see, will help us improve transforming data in Kafka without relying on very uh, heavy libraries. So Kafka Connect is a way to import data from the same sources into Kafka. And so there are Kafka connectors for everything. For example, databases, JDBC, Couchbase, Golden Gate, SAP HANA, Blockchain, SQS, MongoDB, like all these kind of technologies have a Kafka source connector. And then we want to share, uh, to send data into the same destinations as well. So Amazon S3, Elasticsearch, HDFS, uh, Twitter, MongoDB, Redis, all these kind of things are destinations that we are used to send data to. And to write code for this is quite difficult. On top of it, if you need to think about fault tolerance, item potence, distribution, and ordering, it becomes very, very complicated to write a good program. So the idea is that a programmer who is an expert at some of these technologies may already have done a very good job at writing a Kafka Connect connector. So the idea is that we'll have our Kafka cluster, some sources, and we'll create a Kafka Connect cluster, which is a separate cluster from your Kafka cluster, and it's going to have workers running on them. And in the hands-on and in this course, we're going to launch a Kafka Connect cluster of just one worker. So they're going to be configured, and then they will take the data from the sources and insert them into Kafka. Then it is very common as a pattern to use Kafka Streams application to do stream processing and to transform that data in real time into your Kafka cluster. And then when it comes to exporting the data from Kafka into your syncs, then it will go again through the Kafka Connect cluster into the target sync. So Kafka Connect, we're going to focus on all the left-hand parts of this diagram. Now the high level, source connectors are going to get data from common data sources and sync connectors are going to be here to publish data into common data stores. It makes it super easy for non-experienced dev to quickly get their data reliably into Kafka, as we'll see in the hands-on. The idea is that it's going to be part of your ETL pipeline, your real-time EPL pipeline. And then scaling is going to be very easy because Kafka Connect has a scaling mechanism in which you can add tasks if you want to parallelize your Kafka connectors. Finally, the code is reused from other people. So the idea is that, yes, you're going to spend more time actually delivering business value and spend less time coding. So in this uh, course, we're going to do a small hands-on. We're going to use the Kafka Connect source called DataGen from Confluence, and it's a way to generate fake data into Apache Kafka. And then I'm not going to demo how to use a sync because I don't want to go through the setup of setting up Elasticsearch or something else, but it is very much possible for you to set up sync connectors such as Kafka Connect Sync Elasticsearch to send the data that has been generated into Elasticsearch. Overall, there are over 80 connectors available, and I want to show you the web page very quickly. So if we go onto the web page for Confluent Connector Portfolio, we can see a lot of connectors that are available here. So we have open source uh, and community and partner uh, connectors, commercial connectors, and premium connectors. And so you can view the list all of here. You can filter by type. But as we can see, we have Amazon S3, Elasticsearch, SGFS2, JDBC, and so on, and so many. We will be using the data gen in this uh, hands-on with Conductor. But if you click on any of these connectors, you're going to get some documentation around what it does, okay? How to download it, how to install it if you want to use the CLI, or download the zip, 
as well as the documentation and some support from the left-hand side and the source if you need to. So really, the idea is that all these connectors right here are going to be used. And if you think about getting a database in Kafka or uh, from Kafka to database, I would strongly recommend for you to explore this web page first of all, okay? So we are ready to get started. And in the next lecture, we will set up Kafka Connect with Conductor.